You ever wonder if you can create a background service on the BuildFire platform? The answer is yes, and I'm going to show you how. So in the BuildFire SDK, you'll find an example called Example Plugin with Service. This will give you the basic layout of the most basic service that you can create. Now a service, for those of you who don't know, is, is code that runs in the background right when you start the app. It doesn't have any visual representation, but can run code that may influence uh, the app and even the visual representation, but it itself doesn't. It's just running in the background. So uh, for example, uh, in this particular example, we're going to show you how code running in the background will trigger after a certain criteria to show you something. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this example looks like. So this is basically uh, the simple control here where you enter in a URL, give it how many seconds you'd like to wait until this URL pops up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and let's go ahead and refresh. And we'll see one, two, three, four, and this pops up, the URL that we put in, which is great. The widget side of this has a service and a visual representation. The index.html is what you're seeing here, but this actually has nothing to do with the execution of that code. Let's go ahead and prove that. Let's go into the widget index.html, and here's some code that basically is showing you that counter. I'm going to go ahead and completely delete that. So there's no code in here. Let's go ahead and refresh it. Stays as XX. And five seconds later, boom, it shows up. So what triggered that is the background service here. So let me go ahead and revert this so we can go over the code. Let's go over the content really quick in the control side. So control content index.html. You have a few inputs up here, a save button that calls a save function. The save function calls buildfire.datastore.save. I'll have a link below for the information about data store if you don't already know it. And at the very beginning of the app, go ahead and get any previously saved data and load it. That's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the widget. So in the widget, you have two files, one that's called index.html. So what this does is pretty much loop once per second to uh, pull some information from local storage, which is basically the counter and show it in some tag here. And that's basically where you see that, that counter. So if you go ahead and refresh, you see that that counter is coming from local storage once a second being updated. We don't actually see yet what's saving uh, that information to local storage. Now let's take a look at the service. Now the service is extremely similar to index.html, the standard widget uh, format. The only difference is uh, you, it's highly recommended that, that you put in this meta tag and it basically disables anything to do with the UI. So BuildFire.js won't try to load the appearance, won't try to load fast click for you because there is no UI, why take that performance in? Now, uh, everything else is the same. If you need to access the data store like we do here uh, to go get the settings that were previously saved, you can do so. Uh, and basically what it's doing is it goes and fetches the saved data from the data store and then initializes. Once it initializes, uh, once a second, it runs an interval and saves to the local storage a counter, one, two, three, four. That's what the widget is seeing. And the reason why is they're sharing the same domain with local storage. And then if the counter equals the number of seconds that we've been waiting for, then go ahead and do buildfire.navigation.openwindow with the URL that was provided. Once you're done, clear out the timer. There's no need to continue and you're out. So that's pretty much it. It's a standard thing that you see in, in your standard widget. The only difference is it'll load right when the app loads up. It doesn't have any UI uh, and it'll continuously run in the background as long as the uh, app is running. Uh, your widget will open and close, open and close. Service will stay open and running throughout, throughout the background and throughout the life cycle of the app. Now, the last bit is plugin.json, not to Tell your plugin that you actually have a service to run. Inside of the widget property, you have another property. So this is an object with a property called service, and you give it the name of the service file. Now it has to be within widget to make it to the app. 
So um, it doesn't have to be uh, service.html, even though that's typically what it's called. You can call it anything you want as long as you match it here. So now let's actually take, uh, let's take this to the uh, dev portal and then to the control panel. So in your file system, you grab the plugin, in this case, example plugin with service, and I'm gonna go ahead and compress this out. Now, once it's here, I'm going to go to the dev portal. Now, this is just my test dev portal here, and I already have it uploaded. I'm gonna go ahead and update it. Yes, it's backwards compatible. No, I haven't updated anything that requires a hard build. Now it's uploading. And it's there. So in my test app on the control panel, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it and see that it's there. So this is my test app that I use for uh, testing purposes for a lot of different plugins. If I come in here and I look for adding a plugin, and I call it service example. So now it shows up here after I uploaded it. Click add. Let's call it service from one. So now I created an instance called service one where we can see my controller here. It's, it hasn't been initialized yet. So I'm going to go ahead and get a, a URL for that. So I'm just going to paste that in here. And we're going to say have it open in five seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And once the app first starts, regardless of whether I'm in that plugin or not, after five seconds, it's going to pop up with whatever URL that I put in there. In this case, I just put a URL to a GIF. Now, let's actually see this on the phone. So, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this app. Now when the app starts loading in the background, the counter is going to start, and after five seconds, you'll see it go and pop up. So let's see that one more time. So notice I haven't uh, displayed the app, I haven't navigated to the app. In fact, it's nowhere in my navigation to get there. All I did was install an instance of the plugin, and the service level automatically started with the app. So let's try that again. It starts running in the background, three, two, one, and it pops up. Now you can see you could do this for geofencing, you could do this for um, ads to pop up, you could do this to track uh, locations, uh, passively integrate with a Bluetooth uh, a device, anything you want, any, any piece of code that needs to run continuously in the background uh, of the app, you use services for. I hope this helps you understand services and uh, gets you started on an amazing service that you guys will develop. Can't wait to see what you come up with.